Hi, welcome to Board Game Opinions. I'm Steve, and we're just about to play Newton. Uh, Newton is a Euro game by uh, Simone Luciani, one of my favorite designers, and uh, Nestori Mangoni. Um, but it effectively is a hodgepodge of five different actions. Uh, the main point of Newton is you've got one of these uh, play boards. Jonathan's got one down here. Um, and you've got a cabinet here. So the game's going to be played over six rounds. Um, and each round you're going to play five actions. You're going to be playing actions uh, along this row here. And once you've played five, what's going to happen? You're going to take one of these actions and you're going to put it underneath the board. And the reason you're going to do that is every time you take one of these actions, so you've got the work action, the explore action, and so on, you're taking equal to the power level of how many of those symbols you've already got. So if Jonathan takes a work action, that was power level one. Jonathan takes, on his next turn, takes the explore action, that's power level two. So as the game goes on and you get more and more symbols down here, the strength of the actions you're going to do increases. You can take different actions here. Now next time Jonathan takes the work action, he will have a second symbol there. What do these various actions do? Well, there's five actions in the game and one wild card. You've got um, the scholar action. When you take the scholar action, you're going to be acquiring more cards from this display here. So Jonathan's gone there with a scholar action of one. That means he can pick one of these cards because he's got one... Um, uh, more to board on the top of it. He can take one of these cards and add it to his hand and play it later on that round. These cards differ from the ones he started hand with because all of these will have a special ability on the top. They will do various things and again check the rule book for what these different things are but like this is an instant one coin, this is a green book and we'll see how useful books are later. Before I go any further, at any point in your turn you've got a few bonus actions to do. One of the most relevant bonus actions you can do is the second one down. You can always pay two coins once per turn to increase the value of that action. So if Jonathan actually wanted a scholar card, a scholar value two, he could pay his two coins that he's collected or started the game with, and instead of doing one of these, he could take any of these, and maybe this is the one he want, add it to his hand and improve his action. Now, because you're gonna be putting cards at the bottom, obviously, as the cards go down the bottom, you're gonna be losing cards from your hand, and you always wanna have a selection of cards, so this action is one you're gonna be doing fairly frequently. The next action you've got is work. Work is this kind of like set square and pencil action, and work relates to one of the spaces on the board. You can see this very cluttered board here. This is a work action as you're going down here. So Jonathan would take his uh, yellow disc, and because he did a value of work action one, he would move one space. For every space you move, you're going to get coins. So if Jonathan later on does a two, and then later on he does a three, every time he moves, he will get a coin. But the key bit, especially with this bit, and this bit, and this bit, is a lot of the things needed to be landed on. So let's say Jonathan on the next round does a work action at value two. He could move one, two, he'd get a coin and a coin, but he wouldn't get this bonus ability. So to get this, 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 and so on, you need to land on them. So Jonathan might do a value, value two action, but you can always do less. So in this case, Jonathan might just move one, and he would get this bonus. This particular bonus gives you an extra explore tile. You can acquire these throughout the game. So Jonathan would take this, he would add it to his board, and now exploring for Jonathan, apologies, not exploring, inventing for Jonathan, becomes a bit more profitable. This action will go through and you'll get towards the end, and you'll just be picking money up, and money is one of these things that you can use bonus actions for as you're playing the game. While we're on that, we're looking at the other bonus actions we've got. You can always pay one money to put two more cards out. So if, you, if you're gonna buy a card but you don't like any of these, you could pay one money to put two more out. Now these cards won't reset until the end of the round, so if other people have been taking cards you want, you might need to do that to get a card that you want as well. But they'll stay out for everyone else. At the end of the round, they'll clear, they'll reset, and so on. And so that's the work action. There are various things you can get on the work action board, but the next action you've got is explore. Now when you explore, you're going to go to the map at the top, and Jonathan's board has an explore tile on it to start with, so he could explore two spaces. He could take his yellow piece and he could move one, two, or one, two, or he could just move one if he wanted to. And he'd be moving around the board, putting uh, like tokens down to say that he's been to places. He's got these tokens that are on his board, and when he's been to a place, he drops a token off. Let's say he goes one, two, he would drop a token off at this place, but not the place he's bypassed. All these big spaces here, he wouldn't be able to put a token down unless he landed on them. Some of the costs on the board cost you money. This costs you two money to pass over um, but when you put a, space, a cube down in the space it's going to do one of two things there are universities and key monuments around the board that, you, that we'll come back to later but some of these other spaces give you bonuses this will give you a bonus um, 
have a point around or three points around if it's the first or second time you visited one of these. So Jonathan will take one of these, he would add this to his board and that exclamation mark means at the end of every round he would get one point. You can see on the board here there's ways to get loads more, there's blank spaces, there's ways to get five and five and three and four, but this means at the end of every round Jonathan would score one point. If he managed to go to the second of those two cities on the board, he would transform it to a three. So you can see on the board, there's one here and there's one here. That allows you to get three points when you've been to this one and the other one. Different things do, they're all instant bonuses, these big squares, that gets you two potions, that's by nice in a sec, four money, this allows you to put extra cubes down, this allows you to put extra cubes down, and this gets you a student. All the other spaces on the board are kind of key universities or key cities. And if you ever pass over the small discs, this is the one exception to landing on things. If Jonathan's first turn, instead of moving two that way, he moved two this way, he could go one, two, he would bypass over this and he would get that. That's an instant two points and an instant one coin. So the little discs are first come first serve. You just need to walk over them. You get those. And then Jonathan will put a cube down on that university, that blue university there. So I mentioned students here. One of the next sections you've got is to kind of invent things. That is the cog symbol here. When you play the cog symbol, you'll be inventing things. And this will be on this kind of like tech tree type track. So if Jonathan goes there at power two, say, he takes his piece and he would move it two spaces. He could go this way, he could go this way, he could go this way. Whenever there's a fork in the road, you can choose which way to go, but you can never go backwards. Effectively, you're trying to get to one of these end game bonus things. But if Jonathan moved two, he could go one, two. And again, this is a disc. He would pick that up. And that's another way to get an extra student. John will take one of his students from the reserve, put it there. And next time he moves on this track, he could decide to move that one, two, and that one, one, if he had a movement of three, for example. Same again, if you want to get access to these big spaces, you need to land on them. And they will usually give you an instant benefit. They all do. For example, this one gives you five money and another student. This one gives you six points and some potions. But what you're aiming to do is to try and get to the end of some of these tracks, which will give you something. These will all be end game scoring for doing a lot of certain things. Again, you can see these in the rule book. But this one, for example, at the end of the game, every potion you have at the end of the game is worth two points to a maximum of 14. And these are variable each game. There's more uh, in the box than actually on the board here, so there's some you won't see, but they will score you points for different things. So again, when you set your board up, you check out that those um, what those are uh, uh, saying there. Now, the key bit is here, to get to the end of this track, you need some requirements. So if Jonathan moved two, one, two, he would need three blue books and an orange book. This is where you go back to your board, and you can see on Jonathan's board, he would need some books visible. Well, he's got one blue book. He doesn't have the rest of the requirements to get to that end spot, which means either he can't do it, or he has to kind of mitigate what he's missing. So you go back to this, what extra things can you do? Well, you can pay three coins to get a potion, and for every potion you have, you can mitigate one book. So if Jonathan had four potions here, and he wanted to get to the end of this track, remember that needed three blue and an orange, he has one blue, two blue, three blue, four blue, apologies, two blue, three blue, and an orange. He does that and he gets to the end of that track. Now his student would stay there, other people could still get to that point, but you can't have two colored students on the same end space, two of the same color. So everyone can get to the end spaces, but only once. And that will give you some end game scoring for different bits and bobs. The last action is the book actions. When you take the book action, you'll be filling in this bookcase with these piles of books down here. When you deplete this pile, you'll get a little bonus. And incidentally, the cubes that you're putting when you're traveling come from this spot. And as you're depleting those, as these are coming off the board, if you manage to get a certain number out, you'll get some bonus points as well. So 1.2.4.8 point, point, points for getting rid of your last four cubes. But what you're trying to do with the book action, so Jonathan's gone there with a book action of value one, which means that he can place one of his piles of books on anything in this top row, because this is book action one. If he went there with two books or three books, he could pick one of the rows further down. And what he's trying to do is trying to place these on something that he's met the requirements of. So book action one means he could put one here if he's got one blue book, here if he had three blue books and so on. Some of the other places here, remember we've been to the board, that we've been to this university on the board. So remember when we explored, we put a cube down, so for Jonathan to put a, one of his uh, piles of books in this spot on the bookcase, he would need to play a book action at value two, he would need to have been to this space, and he would cover that up there. What you're aiming to do is fill rows and columns. So if Jonathan had managed to fill these three over maybe the course of one or two turns, maybe two or three turns, because some of these are a bit trickier to do, 
then he now unlocks this point. Remember I said you got these points at the end of the round. Well, anything on this board, in fact, all the end round bonuses will be dotted round here. There are ways to pick up other ones. And you'll get these points at the end of every round. And there are six rounds in the game. So we'll do that as you're going. You're filling these in. And this is a way that seems to be quite high to score quite a few points. That's books there. Now, remember, you can always use potions to negate the books on the tech tree track. You can also play potions to negate books on this track here. So if Jonathan wanted to cover this space up, he's got one blue book. He's gone one book, so he's gone on the right value here. He could pay one potion to ignore the second requirement there. So potions are useful. And at any point in your turn, you can always pay three coins to get a potion. So if you manage to pick up lots of coins, you can use these potions to fill up other bits. This is what the potion does. You can pay one potion to ignore a book, or you can pay three potions to ignore one of the key spaces. If one of the university spaces or the ancient landmark spaces on the board, you can pay three potions to ignore those. So if Jonathan wanted to go here and he hadn't visited on the map, he could pay three potions and that would allow him to do that. Now you can see the more books you add, they kind of help each other out. So as you're adding more books, you're now getting four, eight, 10 points around, 13 points around, and that can add up over the course of the game. There are some other little bits and bobs as well. You're going to start the game with these four special cards. I'm not going to show them because we're about to play. But these four special cards will be master cards. You can play if you do certain things. There are four ways to play a master card. One of them is to complete this here. This will instantly allow you to take one of your master cards from your hand, play it face up, and it's going to do a quite powerful ability and it will give you some end game points. There will be some victory points uh, on the bottom of the master card. So I've got it upside down, which will get you some points for it. And it will do some sort of ability. And you've got a choice of four of them. You can get all four masters out of the course of the game, but there are only four spots on the board to do it. There's one from completing your ninth book. Effectively, if you vacate that, you instantly get to play a master and you do it there and then. There is one spot on the work track, as you're getting here. If you land on this spot, you get to do that. There is one spot on the tech tree track. If you get to the end of the tech tree, you get to do that. And finally, there is one spot on the board that you can land on that and play a master. Okay. The game will be played after six rounds. So remember, each round you're putting one of your cards down the bottom and it's increasing the value of the actions you can do. Once you've played your fifth card, there will be one more round and then you will do end game scoring. There isn't that much end game scoring. There's nothing for money, there's nothing for potions. Uh, you will end game scoring, you'll get the points you'll be getting each turn from here. Maybe some points from doing some of the special actions on the board. But at the end of the game, you'll get points for the master cards that you've played, for the. Um, I'll be it actually. Uh, is there something else you get points for? So just to clarify on the actions, everyone plays one of these cards into these spaces each turn until everyone's played five cards, one at a time. And then you take one of these and put it under here, clear them off, and then you play the next round. So each round you're getting one of these under here until you finish the game. Okay. Yeah. And there's a bit yeah, of game scoring is these and yeah, the correct. cards. So yeah, last thing. So the master <laughs> cards and these. So let's say Jonathan's got this one here. He would get three points for every one of the universities he's visited up to a maximum of 15. Now there are six universities on the board, so if you manage to visit all six, you'd only get 15, but that's quite a lot of points. And if you can get to this one, this one, this one, and this one, you can kind of compete with the people who have been building their bookcase up and getting points per round. Um, it is an accident selection game. You play a card, you do what it says, and after, at the end of six rounds, the most points is the winner. Just to clarify on the cubes yeah. as well, so these are initially filled, aren't they? You take yeah. one of your cubes and they're all filled at the start. And when you play a cube onto the map, you, you always take, take it from, from the top, top left, yep. then you take the top right, and then you do the second row, and then you do the third row. And these points, you get them immediately, do you? You do, as soon as you vacate that Ah, little one. lightning means immediately, yeah. So once I've removed this cube, I'll get one point, then I remove this one, this one, and this one will get me eight points. Is that yep. right? Okay. okay. Uh, you do the best ability. The last thing I'll mention is your sixth card in your hand is a wild card. Hand. Now, when you play your wild card, if I played it here, I can choose what action I want to do. I could choose explore, and I would explore at value two. I could choose technology, and I could do technology two. I could just choose scholar and take one of the cards. But when you do, let's say I chose explore, and I did it value two. If you played an explore card later on, you would still only do it value two. This it does not count for other cards. It only counts when you play it, and it can be wild. Putting this down the bottom will not give you any benefit, and if you do lose this card, it might mean that there's certain actions you can no longer do as the game goes on. Okay, um, so that's everything, Newton. Hopefully this quick uh, teach-through will either inspire you to buy it, inspire you to try it, or maybe just help you out teaching it to other people. We're about to play. Let's see how it goes. 